Three, two, one, go. Hi guys, my name's Alex. Welcome to the um, Havana Club 3 year competition. I'm going to start off today with a lovely drink I've come up with involving uh, Havana Club 3 year. I'm going to chill my martini glass down there for you. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to put some lemon juice on, some lime juice, and some sugar just to get this balance and texture all going. Okay. <laughs> So squeeze some fresh lemon. Okay, so you're going to go to a, uh, 12 and a half ml of fresh lemon juice. Give it a very nice stir. Then, just to balance that up, the 12 and a half ml of lime juice also. Squeeze that in there, nice freshly squeeze. Fantastic. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to go for one, one half a spoon of brown sugar, just to balance those two up, just to take away from the sour of the lemon and the lime, make it nice and balanced. There we go. All stirred in, very nice. Okay, now next thing, we're going for the star of the show, we're going for the Havana Club H3 year. We're going for 37.5 mil. It's a nice, nice measure. There we go, all in there, wonderful. Okay, the next thing we're going for, guys, is some pear juice. There's pear flavourings with the smell in the Havana 3 year, so I'm going to bring the, the nose element of this to the palate. Okay. Popping it in the drink. You get a lovely, lovely pear notes coming through there. Okay, and put some vanilla gum, vanilla syrup from mine in. 12 and a half mil. Just give a really nice, smooth, caramelly, creamy texture going on in there. Okay, guys, the start of the show, the ever very expensive and very luxurious saffron. Put a nice, nice pinch of saffron in there. Good a little bit just in the palm of my hand. Pour that in there. And the classic, good old shake and double strain. There we go. And before I put this into the glass, I'm just going to rinse the glass with some absinthe. It's not just any kind of absinthe, it's La Fille Parisienne with the Czech style absinthe. It's got slightly less anise in there, so it's slightly less licorice -y. Just a little drop in the bottom of the glass, and gives it a nice swill, so it coats the entire inside of the glass. There we go. It gives it a lovely flavour and balances really nicely with the notes of the pear. You get a wonderful smell every time we go for a nice, nice another sip. There we go, just discard that. Unfortunately, it's not needed. There we go. And now, just going to double strain this in there. You notice it gives a very lovely golden colour. That's the saffron doing its work there. Gives some lovely smells as well. There we are. And as it's a pear drink, I'm just going to pop a lovely slice of pear right on the side, just so you get a nice little nibble of it as well. There we go guys, enjoy. Thanks Alex, so just a few questions so we can get under the skin of what makes you tick as a bartender. Um, who, past or present, uh, inspires you in the industry? Oh, well, present, it'd have to be Wayne Collins of uh, Maxim UK, the guy who gets to make great drinks every day of his life, he gets to do it on TV, he gets to do it on uh, something for the weekend, and uh, I guess hey, he's on TV, he's uh, doing what he loves on a big grand scale. Excellent, okay. Um, now there are lots of, kind of, lots of trends in the industry right now, for good or for bad. What bartending trend that's, that's, that's taking off at the minute excites you? What gets you going? Well what I like, I, I do kind of like this whole new uh, molecular mythology that uh, people such as Heston Blumenthal are bringing in with all the smells and different flavours and uh, making the mojitos into ice cubes. But what really excites me is uh, going back to basics with the old classics, uh, the uh, good range of old fashions that are going on at the moment and uh, all the old bitters that are coming back in. Bitters are becoming very popular again which is 
really great to see. Cool, great. Um, if you could make a cocktail for anyone, dead or alive, who would you make a drink for and what would you make? Uh, we'll probably have to be Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, and uh, anything rum based for that, for that gentleman there, just just a uh, Cuba Libre's rum, coke, and lime would be absolutely perfect. I'm sure he'd be uh, having one or two of them. Cuba Libre, no doubt, using the Vanna Club. Um, if you could leave a legacy behind you, whether it's in the bar that you work or in the city that you work or nationwide or worldwide, what would you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for a good time bar, so where people come, where they enjoy themselves, where they get great drinks. Uh, it's a place that people want to go to every Friday, every Saturday, and every day ending in Y, every, any, any day of the week. Ideal. So, your attitude to bartending, three words. Uh, attitude to bartending, three words. Fun, passionate, and educational. People come to my bar, they have to explain things to them. Okay, good stuff. What's, th- just the last question, what's your pet hate behind the bar? Pet hate behind the bar? Uh, probably bartenders that don't smell, that don't engage you, that just give you the whole, hi guys, what can I get for you? You know, there's no. No interaction with the guests. That's that's what that's what it's all about for me. It's making them feel like they are special every time they come to the bar. Thank you very much, Alex.